everyone. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel for my first ever Q&A. I put out a story on my Instagram a couple of weeks ago asking if anyone had any questions about how I run my embroidery business from home. So this is just the video answering those questions. At last, I did put that story out uh, quite a few weeks ago. But as you can see, it's Christmas time. So I've kind of been preoccupied with other things aside from making YouTube videos, which is a shame because I love making YouTube videos. I will also be answering any questions that I've left unanswered in my YouTube comments. So if you have left a comment previously on a video, which I haven't responded to, I might get around to answering it in this video. I'm going to leave um, a list of the questions asked down in the comment section below. So if there's anything specific you want to look for, you can just skip along to that time. But I'm going to start off with the question that I'm asked most, and that is, um, to be honest, I'm really surprised that people still ask me this, considering how often I bring it up in the videos. But the question I get asked most is, what embroidery machines do I use and how much are they? So the embroidery machines I prefer to use are Happy Japan embroidery machines. I bought them from Midwest Machinery. I do also have a brother PR655, which is upstairs, but I have done a video on why I prefer to use these machines over the brother PR655. I'll leave a link for that down in the comment section below. These two machines, if you purchase them brand new, uh, these are the older models. There's now a newer model out now, which is called the HCS3. The HCS3 starts at about... Um, I can't remember how much it was excluding VAT, but including VAT is about £9,000 brand new. That machine is about £16,000 including VAT or at least they were the last time I checked, may have changed since then, you know how the price of everything has gone up lately. The second question is, do you have a video for magnetic hoops? And what is the biggest magnetic hoop I can use on the Happy Japan HCS2 or HCS3? Yes, I do have a few videos on magnetic hoops. Again, links down in the description below. Um, but I need to update the video as I have recently bought another magnetic hoop and I know I'm going to regret backing into the shop for this because I am actually wearing my pyjamas. It's very cold in the United Kingdom but this is my new toy. Uh, she started embroidering an atlas moth but this is a magnetic hoop and this is currently the biggest hoop I own. It's about 37 centimeters by 34 centimeters I want to say. She is a hefty beast, but unfortunately a hoop this large can only be used on the larger model embroidery machines such as the Happy Japan HCU and their other 50 needle model embroidery machine. Because of the weight of this hoop, it can only be used on the larger embroidery machines. And the same goes for the equivalent magnetic hoop that is the size of approximately this. This is a 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter embroidery hoop. You can get a magnetic hoop that is about the same size as this. Should you use it on your HCS2, HCS3? Not really because of the weight of the hoop and that is unfortunate, but unless you're running your embroidery machine at very, very slow speeds, there is a chance you'll wear out the motor. So I can't say for certain what is the biggest magnetic hoop you can get for these embroidery machines, but just because it fits doesn't necessarily mean it's right from the embroidery, right for the embroidery machine. So before purchasing anything, I would always recommend checking with the supplier to ensure you're getting a piece of equipment that is suitable for your embroidery machine. Question number three, have you tried any other embroidery thread aside from Madeira? Yes, tried loads, but I always end up going back to Madeira. 
But other brands of thread that I have tried that I do find quite good are Isocord, would probably be my second favourite. I've also tried Kingstar embroidery thread and uh, Brothers Own embroidery thread I also find that is particularly good. I just find that I'm always coming back to Madeira because they have a huge range of colours in their colour palette as well as Madeira seem to have a big focus on sustainability and just generally being more environmentally conscious and that's something I really appreciate in a brand. Question number four completely diverts away from embroidery. It was how is the printer going and how is the card business? Ah uh, well in a word it's not. I didn't get the demand for the cards that I hoped I would and the printer inks are very expensive because I wasn't selling as many cards as I'd like to. I wasn't able to buy in the cards in the quantities that I needed in order to make it um, a viable business venture. So we've shelved the card business for a while, but I do hope to start doing something different with the printer very soon. I'm just thinking of changing tact a little bit and producing sticker sheets instead as I think the card market was quite saturated and it was hard for me to stand out from the crowd when there are so many brilliant card makers already out there. Question number five is again relating back to the card printer and it's a question I get asked a lot. Uh, where do you get your card stock from? Literally eBay. I just typed in inkjet printer friendly semi gloss card stock and I bought a few options on there. Um, I don't think I went for the cheapest and honestly I don't think it was like branded or anything there was loads of people selling the same thing so literally just eBay. Going back to embroidery on question number six what digitizing software would you recommend? Uh, I am a die-hard Embird fan I think it's great value for money you have to purchase the basic software and then you need to purchase the studio plugin in order to be able to turn pictures into embroidery files. The one thing that really lets Ember down, I think, is its font engine. Um, I find it's a little bit lacking in comparison to more expensive digitizing software like Hatch. If I was to start again from the beginning, I don't think I'd actually purchase Ember because genuinely it's so easy to use and brilliant that when I went on to the sort of industry standard software, Hatch will come. Um, I just found, because Ember was so easy, I found Hatch a little bit more complicated and it was really hard to kind of break the habits that I learned while using Ember and transfer those skills onto Hatch. So if I could do it again, because Hatch is a superior software and Wilcom is a superior software, I would purchase them from the offset and use that as my digitizing software because generally it does more than Embird. That being said, Embird is still a fantastic software and if you are on a budget and you want to start learning digitizing, go for Embird, it's great. But I should point out those are the only two digitizing software I've used. I can't really comment on any other digitizing software. So if you have any suggestions or preferences, leave your comments down in the comment section below so other people can draw on your knowledge. Question number seven is which thread would you recommend, polyester or rayon? Well, that all depends on what you are embroidering and what you're embroidering onto. Anyone who has followed me for a while now knows I'm very big on avoiding using plastics whenever and wherever I can. Personal grievances aside though, it does depend on what you want to make. So if you're going to be embroidering onto a sports kit, or something that's going to be washed regularly or come into contact with bleach, then you're going to want to use a polyester thread as it's usually bleach resistant. Polyester thread is also much more durable. Rayon threads tend to break more often, but only when, or usually when, there is an issue with your machine. For example, the needle needs to be changed or the tension is wrong. So rayon thread sort of pushes you to keep your embroidery machine in optimum condition. Polyester thread allows you to get away with more and that can often be a negative thing because while you might not be getting thread breaks, 
you might start getting bird nesting under a design and that can lead to projects being destroyed. Question number six, what lubricant do you use? Is this LB5, I got it from Madeira Threads. What is also quite useful about this product is it does tell you where and how often to spray on the bottle. Is Happy Japan's built-in software better or worse than Brothers? This is a really good question and it deserves a much longer answer. So I'm probably going to do a video dedicated to the differences between the two. Both machines do a lot of the same things. Sometimes they do the same thing, but in a different way. I'm going to say I prefer the Happy Japan's inbuilt software because you can do a lot more with it. On the Brother machine, I find I'm prone to making more mistakes, particularly if it's a design with more than six colors. Um, I'll have to explain more on this in that future video. But generally, I find the Happy Japan's user interface much more logical and straightforward. But there are some key features on the Brother software, like how to position designs, um, on the on the screen you can visualize it better uh, I find the brother software is better for that and it is a really big thing for me as I try to fit as many designs as possible in one hoop the happy Japan machine however can duplicate designs much more quickly uh, so if you're making a lot of the same design over and over then the happy Japan machine is better there's an awful lot more I can say on this, so I will be making a video on it in the future. Next question. Does the Hoopmaster work for all multi-needle embroidery machines and do you like it? What is the Hoopmaster, I hear you ask? Well, it is a tool made up of two parts. That is the station and the thing I'm holding in my hands at the moment is the fixture. And I use this for hooping up my garments. It's easy to use. You place the lower ring of your hoop into the fixture and then you would place some stabilizer on top as well. I've just not done it in this demonstration. Then you get your garment. I'm using a hoodie and then drag it over the top station. There are markings on the station to ensure that the hoodie and the garment is even on the station. Then you just grab your top of your hoop, press down and the garment is hooped up. It's that quick and easy. So yes, I absolutely do recommend buying Hoopmaster if it isn't on your Christmas list already, it should be. The second part of the question, can it be used with all multi-needle embroidery machines? Yes, and I believe the station is universal. The only drawback is that the fixture is made specifically for one type of hoop. So here I am using my 18 centimeter hoop and what I am inserting in the middle is the 15 centimeter hoop. As you can see, it is too big, uh, rather the fixture is too big and the hoop bottom sits loose inside it. So for each different hoop size, you would need to buy a new fixture in order for it to be a perfect fit and they aren't particularly cheap. Same goes for if it's a different brand of hoop. As you can see, I'm using my square magnetic frame here and obviously that doesn't fit within the circle that uh, my fixture is made for. So you have to purchase different fixtures for each hoop. Number 11, I've run out of fingers, <laughs> um, is a more personal question. What has been the make or break moment of your business? And to tell you the truth, I don't think I've had one. Um, I guess the real test will be as we move forward into 2023. Obviously, the recession is happening, so that's going to put a lot of strain on my business as people don't tend to purchase products like mine when money is a bit tight. Um, I am also launching a new range of products, hopefully around March time. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it all goes well, or in three months you might see me posting a new video saying it's all over and I quit, but hopefully not. Number 12 is what has been the most difficult thing to deal with 
at the beginning of setting up a business and my answer to this is going to be all of the really boring things mainly related around tax and VAT and general accountancy things that I just don't understand and still don't understand and they're still very difficult and they do still cause me a lot of stress. The next tricky thing for me is finding a niche that I was successful in and sticking with it. I still have a hard time doing this because if I see an opportunity or a new trend, something that's going to make me money quickly, I instinctively chase after it. Even if it's got nothing to do with my brand or audience, and I do find that is very detrimental to my business because I am straying away from my target audience. So basically try to stop doing everything at once. And final question, unlucky 13, what advice would you give to somebody doing their first market show? I'm not sure if by market, the person was referring to like an indoor event or an outdoor event, um, but specifically for outdoor events, weatherproof your stand. Um, a while ago, like two, a year ago, a year ago now, I sold at my first outdoor event and just did not account for the fact that wind exists outside. And I got these big display boards and the wind was like jostling them and threatening to blow over everything on my stand. It was horrifying. So if you are doing an event outside, strongly recommend taking things like rope, clamps, pegs, anything to make sure all of your products are secure. Keep in mind if you've got paper products, they could blow away or be damaged by any rain that might blow under the canopy, if there is a canopy, and sort of just damage your stock. So that's what I'd say for like outdoor markets. And the next points can cover both outdoor and indoor markets. Most people purchase things and pay with card now, so make sure you have a card reader. Take lots of water with you. That's also really important because you'll just be talking constantly. Your throat gets really dry and you just suffer without water. So take lots of water with you. Also take business cards. I know I'm not really a fan of business cards. I know people pack them in with their orders and stuff online. I did a poll once and it said the results of the poll said that most people actually throw away the business cards. So I was like, well, what's the point in even getting them printed if they're just going to be thrown straight in the bin? But it's different at in-person selling as a person who might not necessarily buy something at your stall will still, still take your business card and then follow you online later. So make sure you've got business cards to help promote yourself at these events. Keep an eye out for things that might start obstructing your stall and bring them to the attention of the organizer before the event starts. I'm talking specifically about queues for potentially other vendors, if you're at a Comic-Con, queues for celebrities, the sort of sneak back and cross your stall and block you from your audience. It's happened a few times to myself and people I know. Luckily, Jordan is very boisterous and he'll just get out in front of the aisle and start uh, shepherding people away from the front of my stall. But if you can stop a problem from occurring before it occurs, it's always better to do that. Try and see if the organizers can divert the flow of people so that it doesn't interfere with your selling point. So that was the final question. Always open to answering more questions. And if you enjoyed this video, I will happily do another Q&A in the future. So please leave your comments and questions down in the comment section below. When I started this channel, I didn't have any expectations for it at all. So I have been so pleasantly surprised with the interactions I've been getting and so deeply appreciative of it as well. I really hope that going into the new year, I can continue creating content that you all enjoy. And if you like my channel, please support it by subscribing and liking this video. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.